evening. I'm not a journalist. What's a journalist? Moving on. Our main story tonight concerns the rise of artificial intelligence. So, are we totally... can we say that? No clue, but we're totally fucked. Very eloquent. Thank you. But really, what's so wrong with giant chicken Jesus? Plenty. Widespread access to AI has become embedded across every social media platform, influencing people's perception of the real world in radical ways. From donation frauds, abusing real-life catastrophes like Hurricane Blaine, or the deliberate starvation of Gaza, to love scams, taking advantage of the loneliness epidemic propagated by a breakdown of real-life social spaces. Is it true that these types of scams are everywhere, and that according to the California Learning Resource Network, as much as 40% of social media is AI-generated, a share that's only anticipated to rise as companies like Meta tailor their algorithms to prefer this content? Yes. And all this content doesn't come from nowhere. It doesn't? Of course not. In order to make this content, companies must steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as their own, without crediting the source. That's plagiarized. Exactly. I stole it from Merriam-Webster verbatim. And now, to talk more about uncredited work, here's someone whose name we never bothered to learn. I'm not an expert, but I can read. The Wall Street Journal reported that across all creative disciplines, commissions had decreased 21% from 2022 to 23, despite the fact that creative work is used to train AI models without compensation or even consent. But companies count on this to exist. In a letter begging for immunity from the British Parliament, The Telegraph reported OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, claimed it would be impossible to train today's AI models without using copyrighted materials. AI doesn't come from thin air. It's a regurgitation of stolen work from hardworking, creative people who aren't getting the credit or compensation they have a legal and moral right to. Technologically, these generative models are impressive, but they can't begin to replicate human creativity. Thank you, uncredited contributor. But if AI can't replicate human creativity, can it at least replicate human bigotry? Of course it can. Models are not just trained on art, but everything on the internet. So it's become good at replicating our biases. Like this actual AI product description that eBay suggested to my mom, highlighting how, quote, the doll's light complexion and Caucasian ethnicity add to its charm. But what happens if there's no reliable and or racist sources for the AI to rip off? Then it just makes some random crap up. Like that time Google's AI overview confidently declared that the sharp abdominal pains I was experiencing was likely due to spontaneous pregnancy, a condition particularly common among 20-year-old men in Georgia and South Carolina for some reason. And yes, it actually said that. So this is only going to get worse with real journalists and scientists not getting paid through licensing and clicks, isn't it? At least they can survive on, eh, never mind, Trump just cut all federal funding. Guess nobody gets to eat anymore. Or drink. According to Alliance for the Great Lakes, generative AI in the U.S. is anticipated to use as much as 150 billion gallons of water for cooling over the next five years. That's more than four and a half times the water consumption of the entire city of Chicago during the same period of time. To put that into perspective, that's the volume of 36 crown halls every single day. That's a fucking strange measurement to use. But it's not just water. AI also ravenously consumes electricity. According to MIT Tech Review calculations, the average image generated, including typical outtakes, uses the same amount of electricity as running the microwave for three and a half hours. That's 210 pizza rolls. Exactly. So what can we do? Nothing. Well, that's depressing. What's new? Today's sponsor, Great Value's original radioactive shrimp, now with even more active cesium-137. And yes, it's actually real. Yes, it is. Just like an Eric Evans aide giving a reporter over $100 hidden inside a sour cream and onion chip bag. Bribes are bigger than ever. Just like ocean plastic. But more on that next week on... We're totally fucked.